she started yes she started yesterday and then she set the foundation um let us have a word of prayer mighty god in heaven lord we come before you this morning we are truly thankful and grateful it is only because of your message that we are not consumed therefore lord as we tarry in the land of the living Lord, we pray that you will use us for your honor and for your glory. We pray that as we're about to do the reading, Lord, we pray that um, we'll take lessons from the reading and uh, may we be a better people when we finish the reading, oh Lord. Uh, we pray that you give us uh, teachable hearts and may the Holy Spirit lead and take charge. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If we can sing a song, hymn number 340, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Um, there is four stanzas. Do you have any volunteers? Please. Yes, I will take the first verse. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Kajia. We'll take uh, the second verse. And third, I'll do that. Uh, two voices for number three. Okay, I'll do, that. I'll do number three. Thank you. And number four. I can take that one, Elder. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, Sister Kenya. Thank you. <clears throat> we have heard the joyful sound. Jesus says, Jesus says, spread the gladness all around. Jesus says, Jesus says, bear the news to every land. Climb the steps and cross the way. Oh, no, tears our Lord's come up. And Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Where the rolling, rolling time, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Tell the sinners far and wide, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing the islands of the sea, echo back ye ocean caves. Earth shall keep a jubilee, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing about the greatest time, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. By his death and endless life, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing it so through the gloom, when the heart for mercy craves. Sing in triumph of the tomb, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Give the winds a mighty voice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let the nations now rejoice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shall salvation full and free, highest hills and deepest caves, this a song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Indeed, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Um, I will share my screen quickly. Um, can we see the screen? Um, Yes. Okay, good. I think there is, um, we give thanks to Sister Martha. She is uh, 
started yesterday and we read some scriptures and then after that we um, read the Desire of Edges. But if we can read Mark, uh, Mark 8, verse 1 to 21, please. Mark 8, verse 1 to 21. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto him and saith unto them, I have compassion on the multitude, because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. If I sent them away fasting to their own houses, they were faint by the way, for diverse of them came from afar. And his disciples answered him from whence came a man safely, these men with bread here in the wilderness. And he asked them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven. And he, had, and he commanded the people to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and gave thanks, and break and gave to his disciples to set before them. And they did, and they did set them before the people. And they had few small fish, and he blessed them, commanded to set them also before them. So they did eat and were filled, and they took up of the broken meat that was left, seven baskets. And they that had eaten were about four thousand, and he sent them away. And straight away he entered into the ship with his disciples, and came into the parts of the Dalmatha. And the Pharisees came forth and began to question with him, seeking of him a sign from heaven, tempting him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit, and saith, Why doth this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, There shall no sign be given unto this generation. And he left them and entered into a ship, and departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. And he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, and of the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. And when Jesus knew it, he said unto them, What reason ye, because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not that neither understand of your hearts yet hardened. Having eyes, see, see ye not. Having ears, hear ye not. And do ye not remember. When I break bread, the five loaves among five thousand, how many baskets were full of fragments took up? They said unto him, Twelve. And when the seven among them, four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said, Seven. And he said unto them, How is it that ye do not understand? Verse 21. Thank you, twins, uh, for reading. Um, that is God's word, and that is what is written. So Jesus performs the miracle, and uh, he feeds uh, the 5,000. Uh, we see God's power being demonstrated there. So yesterday we went as far as DA 404.2, uh, where Jesus did um, uh, heal the man in a way that was a bit strange uh, because we are told that um, he, I mean, touches his, says his side and his thought his ears that would not open to the truth, the tongues that refused to acknowledge the Redeemer and the word be opened and the man's speech was restored and disregarding the command to tell no man, he published abroad the story of his cure. Uh, I think we had um, gone through that chapter and exhausted it. Uh, unless there's anybody with a quick comment on that or a question, but otherwise, I think we can move on to deserve ages 
three. Uh, is there a volunteer to read where it says Jesus went up into the mountain and there a multitude flocked to him? I can read. Yes, yes. Jesus went up into a mountain and there the multitude flocked to him, bringing their sick and lamb and laying them at his feet. He healed them all and the people heathen as they were, glorified the God of Israel. For three days they continued to throng about the Savior, sleeping at night in the open air, and through the day pressing eagerly to hear the words of Christ and to see his works. At the end of three days, their food was spent. Jesus would not send them away hungry, and he called upon his disciples to give them food. Again, the disciples revealed their unbelief. At Bethsaida, they had seen how, with Christ's blessing, their little store availed for the feeding of the multitude. Yet they did not now bring forward their all, trusting his power to multiply it for the hungry crowds. Moreover, those whom he fed at Bethsaida were Jews, they were Gentiles and heathen. Jewish prejudice was still strong in the hearts of the disciples, and they answered Jesus, Whence can a man satisfy this man with bread here in the wilderness? But obedient to his word, they brought him what they had, seven loaves and two fishes. The multitude were fed, seven large baskets of fragments remaining. Four thousand men beside women and children were thus refreshed, and Jesus sent them away with glad and grateful hearts. Thank you, thank you for the reading. Um, so here we see Jesus going up the mountain and um, the, he performs miracles there. There's healing, he heals the sick, the lame uh, that are lying on his feet for three days. And we see the heathens glorifying God. So... The, this healing is not just a matter of healing the sick for the sake of healing them, but it is a witness. So it's like a witness to them, to the heathens, because the heathens are glorifying God. On the other hand, we have the Pharisees who tarry with him as well for three days. They are following, and already they are wondering in their hearts, I mean, whence can a man satisfy these uh, these men with bread here in the wilderness? They are wondering where on earth, how on earth is, is he going to satisfy, I mean, um, these people with bread in the wilderness? So the Pharisees have seen Jesus healing the sick and the lame, but it shows us the state of their hearts and their prejudices. I mean, I mean, against other people. Uh, do I have any comments on this? Um, if we can lift our hands and then we can comment. Any comments? Any questions? Then we can reason together. I have this, uh, the Tattle Twins and then Sister Hop. Yes, good morning. So the, the disciples were working so close to Jesus and they saw all the miracles, what he did there with the loaves and the fishes, but they still didn't believe, they still didn't believe that he could do anything, you know. It's hard to believe when you can see it in front of your, in front of your eyes that what he did. And, and the same situation rose again. And, and they still were murmuring, and complaining, didn't believe, you know, lack of faith. And the prejudice was still running strong because there was a lot of Gentiles there as well. And they had camp meeting, didn't they? Certainly had camp meeting for the three days, you know, and slept out in the open. Perhaps some had tents, we don't know, kind of shelters, but um, it must have been good weather because <laughs> you couldn't sleep out in the rain. So and it was it was a blessed time they had, and, uh, you know, uh, many people from that time onward followed Jesus. Yeah, it was good. 
Oh, my apologies. Um, I said it's the Pharisees. Uh, it's actually the dis his disciples that are wondering how is he going to feed people in the wilderness. Yeah, that's... Yeah. My apologies. I thought it was the Pharisees, but this even makes it worse because these are yeah. the dis his disciples. Sister Hope, please. Uh, thank you, Elder, and good morning all. Uh, we are seeing there what I'm learning as well because we're, they're talking about signs, and uh, uh, they had seen they had seen uh, the 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 multitude that were fed, the the, the actual uh, fish and the, the the bread at one time when he fed the five thousand. Now he's feeding the four thousand. Uh, the spirit of unbelief is is indeed stems from the heart is that when the heart is not converted no matter how you cannot see uh, even when you have eyes you cannot hear even when you have ears as we read there in mark so the the, the spirit of unbelief and 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 remember that uh, we read there he did not just feed these people and it's not just the disciples he said, even moreover, those whom he fed at Bethsheba were Jews, and these were uh, these were Gentiles and heathen. Um, so we can see that uh, uh, that kind of spirit it, it stems from the heart, and you know the heart is so. What does do they say in Jeremiah? It, it's it's wicked and des des desperately. Um, it, it's it's very deceptive and uh, desperately wicked. Um, so uh, we see we see with our eyes, but the eyes of our heart, uh, uh, because it's the heart. Once the heart sees, I mean, they they would have seen Jesus Christ and all the miracles, and they were looking for this Messiah. They would see these wonderful miracles, uh, the signs that Christ desired them to see, to show them, and to make known of them that he's the Messiah. He's the one breaking the bread. His power to do all this, it is unbelievable. And and, and so much as we, we, we touched on it yesterday, we, we so much think of, of, of uh, miracles and the things that God gives us and, uh, and show us. And when we are not given, not fed, we feel, where is my God? Why, why am I ill? Why, why am I going through certain circumstances? We are so much like these Jews and the heathen and the Gentiles. But God wants a heart. I'm seeing here, God, Christ wanted to open up the eyes of the understanding of their own hearts. A heart filled with unbelief is a heart can never have faith. It's all to do with faith. And it says that the Jewish prejudice was so was still strong in the hearts of the disciples. So the heart uh, we, we have to consecrate. Who knows this heart? Only Christ. And that is why in in uh, in our times we are living in. Let us give Him our hearts. He made us. He made us. He knows our hearts. And so that he can indeed consecrate our hearts so that we can see the things that we want. he wants us to see. Hear what things he wants us to hear so that we can follow him when he's talking to us. Only through the power of the Holy Spirit when he touches the heart. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, indeed it is the heart that is asking us to, to, to surrender. Um, because you see unbelief here. He tarried for three days. Uh, in the end, he's still asking them, "How uh, come? Uh, why is it that they don't understand?" So if they've tarried for ten days, they'll still, um, their hearts were still going to be the same. So this shows us that really, um, the lesson there for me is that we can hear a lot of uh, sermons, we can hear a lot of teaching, and um all the time, but unless uh, our hearts are surrendered to Christ, nothing happens. It just comes through one ear and goes through the other, and the word doesn't profit us. So we are told that the word did not profit, profit the Pharisees because they did not apply faith to what they had, but they had a lot of things, and they followed Christ everywhere. 
but their hearts were so far away from him. Physically, they were close to Christ. So physically, we can be close to Christ, but as long as our hearts are not surrendered to him, we are far away from Christ. Um, I think I saw another hand. Was it Sister Matanga? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Brother JB, and good morning, everyone on the platform. I was also just going to comment on this uh, sin of unbelief. All of us, this is the sin which we need to be praying for every day of our lives. Uh, Sister White talks about um, that, especially in the days which we are living now, we cannot even trust our own senses. If somebody comes and tells you that this book is, is, is white and the Bible has told you that this book is black, you would rather say it is black or even though you are seeing it with, with your eyes. Because this is where we are going, where things are going. There's just going to be so much deception. We just have to be grounded in the word of God. It doesn't matter who is telling you. It doesn't matter what you are seeing. It doesn't matter how you are feeling. You cannot trust our senses anymore. And the Bible, you know, the word of God is teaching us from the beginning, this thing which is, is so disgusting before God. And in Revelation 21, it says that, uh, 21 verse 8, the fearful and the unbelieving, we see the children of, of Israel, they had crossed the Red Sea. Each one of them, they crossed the Red Sea. They'd seen the miracles of Christ. They had seen everything. But there was there was still unbelief that they were going to go to Canaan and all of them perished. And all these things were written for our admonition. Therefore, we need to pray to have faith and believe what God says. Those people who believe, like Abraham, who had faith to say, okay, I believe this is God speaking to me, so I will do. The sin of unbelief is what is going to exclude us from the heavenly kingdom. It's because when we believe and we know who is talking to us, we have no problem in, 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 in obedience. Therefore, we need to pray to have that faith and grounded in believing that if God says this, it does not matter whoever says anything else, I would rather do what God says. Because our senses, our, our, our circumstances, our whatever, we will always present us. See, this is why the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Those who have been justified by Christ will not live by, they will take that step of faith no matter what circumstances, no matter what senses, no matter how much you are feeling, no matter is saying, this is what God has says, I will live by it. So let us pray to have that belief in God, that grounding in God to say, that says the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Kezia. Um, that is very um, important, what you've mentioned there. Um, does anybody have any question about this uh, I mean, section of the study or any quick lessons that we take away from this? Because as we read, uh, we need to take away lessons from what we are reading here. So we have seen that it's important for us to apply belief and faith in the word of God and to follow that says the Lord regardless whether it makes sense or it doesn't make sense or whether somebody doesn't understand what we are doing. So it's important that at the end of the day, we pray for the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit lead us and guaranteed we, are, we will not please everybody. Um, think I saw the twins. Yes, um, Jesus' ministry was a holistic ministry. He not only uh, uh, 
sort of the, the spiritual need, which was very important, it also sort of the physical needs. Because if you need physically, you know, if you're really hungry or whatever, uh, you're not, you, it's going to affect your spiritual um, uh, perceptions as well. And so he, 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 he made them, he, you know, he, he looked after their physical needs as well. And it says, they, then he sent them away with glad and grateful hearts. So we, you know, we come to Jesus and we, we can have glad and grateful hearts when he, 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 he looks after us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, twins. Uh, I think I see a comment there. Uh, oh, Father Desire, welcome, welcome. Uh, he hasn't been with us for a while, but he's here and we give thanks that uh, he's back in the UK. And he's asking a question there. He says, what is unbelief? Anybody in short, please answer that question. What is unbelief? Not taking God by his word, at his word. Okay. Anyone else? I think for me, it's reading what we're reading from the scripture as we read and study, but failing to apply faith. Because unless faith is applied, to thus says the Lord, thus just becomes a reading. It, it will not edify anybody. The word of God is there, but unless we believe and apply faith to what is written, the word of God is of no effect to anybody. It has all the power, but unless I believe and apply faith to what is written, it doesn't benefit me. That's how I see it. Uh, prayer retreat. I don't know who's that. Yeah, it's me, Elder. All right. Just Elder. to respond to that to that question. Um, there's two elements to doubt. There's disbelief and there's unbelief. Disbelief is when you need a little bit more evidence for you to believe. But unbelief is when you have had the evidence. And despite the evidence, you still choose not to believe. So that's that's um unbelief. Evidence is there, but in your arrogance, you choose not to believe it. Thank you. Thank you, Elder. In other words, it's uh yeah, half that hardened. Sister Judith. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, I just wanted to say sometimes you don't actually realize that you you have unbelief in the sense that you maybe there's a trial which comes your way and you know God has has been with you, has has been um has delivered you in many other things in your life and then something comes up again. And you start worrying, you can't sleep, you, I mean, I do it sometimes. And you, you, it's kind of like, you know, and you're praying, but somehow it's not sinking in your heart to say, I prayed about this. Why am I worried about this thing? So for me, I think that's unbelief. That's why it's so important that we, we remember what God has done for us in the past. Maybe uh, even to write down when, when God has delivered you in something, to have something which will always remind you so that, or even have a notebook to say, God delivered me in this. And when you are faced with that challenge next time, because I think as humans, we are so easy. It's so easy for us to forget that God has done this. And so why should I be worried now? The same way like with the disciples, they have seen Jesus breaking the, uh, feeding the 5,000. But when it came to the 4,000, somehow, yeah, it was unbelief, but somehow they didn't remember that Jesus is able to do this miracle. So for me, it's more of going back and 
reflecting on what God has done before so that you are not deceived by the enemy thinking that, no, this is so big. And then that way it, you get encouraged. Faith increases. I don't know if I made sense. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sis. I'll check the twins and then we'll move on. Yes, I was just thinking about the multitudes, 4,000 plus women and children, and the, and the one before, uh, 5,000 plus women and children. When these dispersed, think that there would be, some of them would be part of the early Christian church because, you know, the news, they take the news with them, what they'd saw, what they'd heard, you know, the words of Jesus and the, and the miracles he did. And so these would be the foundation of the early Christian church. And the, and the, the 4,000, if, if there was, if they, they had big families in those days, and if if there was two say two two children and, and mother and father, you can multiply that by four, and that's sixteen thousand. And the other one it multiplied by four is twenty thousand. That's a lot of people. And in this last lot, they said there were Gentiles as well, and so they would go back to perhaps the heathen lands, you know, and and it would start the early Christian church, you know, because they they, they couldn't keep quiet what they'd seen and what they'd heard. You know, it was out. It was it was something out of the out of the norm, wasn't out it? Out of the ordinary. Yeah. Out of the ordinary. Yeah. Yeah. And they'd have to say, "We have found the Messiah." What else could you say? <laughs> yeah, the disciples didn't believe. I mean, <laughs> yeah. What else could you say? We have found the Messiah. Amen. Thank you, twins. I think um, the the it's important that you note that even the heathens could glorify God. So the heathens saw something that uh, they saw the power. They glorified God of Israel, and that was key, really. Uh, got prayer ministry. Uh, sorry, prayer. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Sharon. I think that was a very important question to mm. ask um, that um, Elder Desire asked um, because. Um, unbelief comes in so many different disguises. And as Christians, we can be quite critical of non-Christians for not believing, but we equally don't have that same level of faith. And therefore, we actually create situations as well of unbelief for like you know and and it's it is so easily done because it happens in conversation like someone will say this thing happened and you will say to them i don't believe it that is so easy to come into a conversation so how many times has god told us to do something and because of lack of belief in his credentials have we not followed it through and that is equally as guilty as those who say there is no God because it is then looking at the credentials of God and question his ability to come through for you or what he says in the Bible of about, say, marriage or roles within the church, et cetera, et cetera, by not um, applying his biddings shows a spirit of unbelief. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Daly. Uh, for that uh, comment. I think we'll move. Sister Judith, if you can read DA 405.1 and 405.2, please. Okay. Then taking a boat with his disciples, he crossed the lake to, Madag to Magdala at the southern end of the plain of Gennesaret. In the border of Tyre and Sidon, his spirit had been refreshed by the confiding trust of the Syrophoenician woman. The heathen people of Decapolis 
and received him with gladness. Now as he landed once more in Galilee, where his power had been most striking, strikingly manifested, where most of his works of mercy had been performed and his teaching given, he was met with contemptuous unbelief. A deputation of Pharisees had been joined by representatives from the rich and lordly Sadducees, Sadducees, the party of the priests, the skeptics, and aristocracy of the nation. The two sects had been a bitter enmity. The Sadducees courted the favor of the ruling power in order to maintain their own position and authority. The Pharisees, on the other hand, fostered the popular hatred against the Romans, longing for the time when they could throw off the yoke of the conqueror. But Pharisee and Sadducee now united against Christ like, like six like and evil whenever it exists, leagues with evil for the destruction of the good. Thank you, Sis, for the reading. Uh, any comment on DA 405.1? So the Sai, the Syrophoenician woman, I uh, think there was a healing that took place for that woman's daughter. So it says uh, that represents someone on the borders between the Jews and the Gentiles. Uh, it says it's a Greek word that designates her as a non-Jew. And uh, that is in the Mark's uh, Gospel 7.26. Is there any comment there on DA 405.1? Uh, let's see. Uh, Sister Hope? Uh, uh, yes, Elder. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, how these Pharisees and the Sadducees, uh, they, they, they never, I mean, they were always in their own controversies. Uh, as we know, some of them believed in angels. Some of them did not believe in the resurrection. These two, these two, these two uh, 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 cultures there. But we can see how indeed they were so united now against Christ. And he said there at the end of the of the paragraph, like like, like speaks like, and evil, wherever it exists, leagues with evil for the destruction of the good. And it's so true. It is so true that they say birds of the same feathers, they flock together. And uh, here we are, we are seeing how these people have come together against Christ. Um, I'm seeing this also because these were people in the congregation. They, they, they thought themselves, of course, the wisest and uh, they, they had the popularity of the people around them. And uh, they were just against Christ, against his theories, against his, his, his work. And so much even, we're going to get to a time when these things are going to happen also in our church. Uh, you, you don't need to see far. You can see when you're uh, perhaps um, involved in the work. You see how unclean spirits come together. And it's indeed, it's so much. We've been warned about these unclean spirits. Uh, but indeed, evil and evil, they always unite. And the whole thing is, is to stop the work from going. Is stop to stop the mission, and they were there to stop the mission of Christ. But Christ is showing us and teaching us that these are going to be happening, but our focus must be on Christ. Our focus must be on his mission. You know, it is going to be there. So we have to be prayerful and asking the power of the Holy Spirit to give us the spirit of unity. God is going to allow a, a, a people who will be united in mission, in mind, in purpose. And there's nothing to fear, nothing to fear. And that is what the mission of Christ was to show us. These people are going to be there. They are going to be in us, but is to remain 
focused. And as, uh, the, uh, as we work together, we are working in, in, in the spirit of togetherness, in the spirit of, of love. Because that's what Satan wants. His whole purpose is to divide and rule, to divide. And that is why we're going to see divisions in the church. And we can only be united in the truth. Only the truth is what is going to unite us. So uh, let us be uh, prayerful and asking God that even when these things happen, we should not stop the work because Satan wants to stop the work. That's what his, his goal is. Amen. Thank you, sis. Uh, it says, uh, the last line, it says, now as, as he landed once in Galilee, where his power has been most strikingly manifested, where most of his works of mercy had been performed and his teaching given, um, he was met with contemptuous unbelief. So Jesus has for three days tarried with them. He because has they, performed... The sorry, there's a mic that is on. He has performed... The works of mercy, he has done the healing, the lame are walking, the blind see. He has done Bible study, but what he is met with is unbelief. You may wonder, what more do these people want? They have seen, they have heard. So I think I see that the, the issue of unbelief is very serious. And it does, it's not really concentrated on um, when Jesus, I mean, was doing this miracle and so forth. And belief continues until today. We see it in our churches. So as Sister Hope is saying, that unbelief continues. And it's only Satan, it's only the father of lies that puts doubt in people's minds um they are hands there uh brother d thank you brother jb uh good morning everyone uh thank you for the But I wanted to just uh, pick up from where you said that uh, the issue of unbelief. I hope you can hear me because uh, I'm more, I'm I'm driving. I hope people are going to. We can hear, but you sound a bit. I uh, sound a bit far. Uh, Uh, let me just try and speak up a bit. Yeah, so I was saying the issue of unbelief is definitely uh, a major one. It's a big issue. The whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation addresses this issue. I mean, the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. And this is what we're dealing with in all these stories that we're reading about the ministry of Christ. Now, I think the Bible, I mean, the reading there did say that something refreshed Christ. It was the faith of the Phoenician man. It's amazing to read that, to see that actually God is refreshed when he sees acts of faith or deeds of faith because that's what pleases God. So I was then asking that question, what is unbelief? Because as everybody rightly says, uh, sometimes we look at unbelief and we think, oh, the people in the world are the ones who don't believe because they don't go to church on the Sabbath. Well, that's another kind of unbelief. But the unbelief that God is addressing comes from this very issue that we're talking about. Not taking God in his way. In fact, faith 
is expecting God's word to do what it says it will do. So to expect God's word to do what it says. God's word has to do what it says. So those who are called believers, they live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So you take the Bible, whatever God says, whatever it is, like what Mary said the other day in John chapter 2, she said to them, whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever comes from the word of God is true. And it has to come to pass. Is a value. Now, the question then is, I think it is somewhere in Luke. In Luke chapter 18, somewhere, maybe verse 9 or 10. There's a powerful question there. It says, when the Son of Man shall come, will he find faith on the earth? Now you wonder, this is not talking about faith. As in, uh, are there going to be people going to church? But are there going to be a people who are still going to be, who will still be living by every word that proceeds from the mouth? That is the question. So when we're looking at unbelief, I think it's, um, for me, this is speaking to me. It's good to believe. Sometimes we believe most of what God says. And then there's areas where we think, oh, God really, can God really help me with this? Maybe victory over this or this I this issue that I struggle with. That is unbelief. We have to take God at uh, uh, take God at His word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that God is. So I just wanted to say in short, um, exactly what the paragraph says: the act of faith pleases God, it refreshes God to see us take God at his word, because his word can't fail, and it displeases him. God is so disappointed with us, because we choose, we cherry pick what we think God can do, yet his word is the one that created. So this is a very important issue. Uh, may God help us to believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother D. I think we are told um, in the scripture, it says, For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Um, so we are told that Abraham believed, but he didn't just believe and sit, sit back and do nothing. He believed and he took action. So the fact that he took action and got up and did what God said, it means he believed, okay, this is what God is saying. I'll go ahead and do it. And if somebody were to ask, what on earth are you doing? He would have said, that says the Lord. That's the same thing here we are told in that story that the people did not believe that surely he will feed them uh, using five lobs. But they said, well, give him. That is what he's asking for. Just give it to him. Um, I'll have, uh, I think it's Elder Tanner. I've got prayer retreat. Um, I don't know whose hand is that. Sharon, so sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes, what I wanted to do is, you know how Christ always seems to do comparisons because he wants us to reason together. We have the Phoenician woman, the last Phoenician woman that is mentioned in the Bible before this woman was Jezebel. Jezebel actually brought um, witchcraft and, and paganistic practices into Israel. Then we have the example of this um, Phoenician woman here, but she shows faith. And so what we're seeing now is that 
God's people, the very people who were appointed to bring faith into his people, which is the, um, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they are bringing in paganistic practices because through all this ritual behavior, you know, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. All of these, I, I don't know how many laws they brought into to practice. It brought in unbelief into the nation of Israel there. And then you have a woman who is on the outside who is who has true faith. And God is showing to us that we need to be so careful that um that there may be even people who are outside the household of faith who are practicing more faith than those who know all of his teachings and call, and still call him lord thank you thank you sister sharon um i will text sister matanga if we can comment as well on DA 405.2 with Sister Judith Red as well. Thank you. Yes, I, yes, just to continue um, on the path of this unbelief, which is really fundamental to uh, us uh, for our salvation. Because if you look right from the beginning, uh, as Sister Sharon rightly pointed earlier on to say, because of what we believe, we are going to do exactly. And we are going to follow through our belief. Because if you look at Eve, he believed the serpent. She, she believed the serpent and she took and ate. And we are in a mess. And therefore, even now is we are going to be standing in the last days when this Sunday law has been enacted and is being tested upon us, whose authority are you going to? It depends on who you believe. Who are you believing to say, oh, it doesn't matter. I don't think if I just get the prick that will prevent me from, from, um, from uh, entering heaven. It's, it is good. It's no connection. And we can see this unbelief really, it's, it's not the, the, the enemy has been fighting because he knows that when we stand firmly on the belief platform, we will not be shaken. So throughout the ages, he has been fighting on to give us that unbelief. I was actually quite surprised when I was listening to, um, to Conrad Vine because he's a historian, he knows um, a, most of the history and then he connects it to the Bible. He says, he was talking about, um, we can say these Israelites, had, um, they didn't have any belief, but there had been so many other people who had, been, who had come before Christ, who were imposters because they were waiting for the, for the Messiah to come. But there were so many imposters. Some had even led to rebellion in AD 30, saying he is the savior now. So, you know, the whole nation, the enemy was waking. The whole nation was so skeptical about this savior because previously there had been so many other imposters who had come claiming to be the savior. Therefore, when Christ then finally came, it was only the few who were believing, who were grounded on the scripture, who had read the scripture, who were seeing these things. Because these things, Satan, remember, Satan is also can also perform miracles. But this magnitude of miracles was different now. And it's only those people now who are saying, no, no, if we compare what he was saying, that he's going to set, um, he's going to, to open the eyes of this, of, of the blind people, he's going to do this. This must have been the Messiah. But remember, the enemy had been sowing so much seeds of doubt, just like he is sowing the so much seeds of doubt in the, oh, Sister White is not a prophet. She can't be a prophet because we are told that um, 
there was no any other prophet after this and what and what all those who justify she's and this is just another writer or whatever because of that unbelief we see now all these things coming into the church because of unbelief so we have to be careful of this sin of unbelief we need to be grounded and to believe what god says and we move by by the spirit of god to say this is what god is says i don't care who, whatever whoever whichever president is going to say this but the word of god says this thank you man thank you oh tackle tackle twins Yes, and uh, it said the, par the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they united against Christ. They could see their popularity dwining, so they united in jealousy and envy against Christ. And that's, that's what the uh, popular churches are going to unite in the end against Sabbath keepers. The only thing they've got in common is Sunday. Oh, 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 there's so many branches here, there and everywhere, and none of them believe the same. So it's going to be Sunday where they unite against Christ, um, God's people. It's parallel. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, but I think as uh, Sister Kezia comments that this, uh, I call it a disease, this disease of unbelief is very serious. It's a serious matter um, because at the end of the day, Without, I mean, belief in what is written, um, no one will act on what is written. So we'll read, we have Bible study, and in that way, spiritually, we remain like dwarfs. Spiritually, we don't go anywhere, we don't grow, because we have to keep on studying the word, keep on hearing. And that's why the scripture says these people are forever learning, but they are not coming to the knowledge of the truth. So it is my prayer that we don't continue learning and hearing these sermons and being fed spiritually. And we are not coming to the knowledge of the truth. We have to come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay, this is what God has said we believe and we apply our faith and we move even when we pray we use the word of god so when we pray we believe this is what god has said so we are able to use the word of god and say lord you said this therefore let it be according to your will so applying faith, this is the ch a childlike faith is what is needed in these last days. A child will not question where will the bread come from tomorrow or today. But the, the, the child knows as long as the parents are there, they'll sort it out somehow. Whether the, child, the parent is broke or not, the child, in a way, doesn't really care. It's not their problem. So in this case, whatever God has said in our heads, in our minds, it has to be, so be it. This is what God has said, and we hold on to it because he has said it. It's not J.B. has said it because he may not fulfill it, but God has said it in his scripture, with joy and gladness, we have to hold on to his, to his word. And by faith, we carry on, really. This is, to me, this is what is comforting because the person that has inspired people to write the scripture is God himself. And all power is in Christ. All power is in God. So whatever he says will definitely come to pass. Thank you, everyone. I think um, we have tarried long. It's 6.32. Uh, we'll carry on from here tomorrow. Uh, it is my belief that we have gained something. And what I've gained this morning is that uh, belief is very important. 
but belief goes with faith. And without faith, it's impossible, impossible to please God. This is not my saying. This is thus said the Lord. This is what is written. Therefore, if we don't believe in what God has said, we need to pray for belief. If we don't have faith in what God has said, we need to pray for more faith urgently. And we need to pray uh, for the Holy Spirit and to help us. Uh, do I have a volunteer to close for us this morning, please? Any other comments about uh, the Pharisees and Sadducees? Uh, that's a lot of politics there that I see, but we can uh, carry on and comment about that tomorrow morning. Do I have a volunteer to pray, please? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for allowing us to come together and to learn all these uh, lessons you are providing us, Lord. Oh, Father, forgive us for our unbelief. We want to believe every word that cometh out of your mouth, dear Father. I pray that as we have learned, if we have heard, how if we are not believing you, I'm praying that, Lord, we may all go and do, that says the Lord, not only to be hearers of your word, but may we also be doers. Because if we just hear and we do not act on what we have heard, then we have unbelief, then it's all useless for us. So Father, help us in our weakness, give us the strength to have to listen to that voice which deceives us, Lord, but to hear you and to trust in what you say, dear God. Strengthen our faith, increase each and every day and help us to walk with you Fill us with your Holy Spirit as we separate. Father, may you not separate from us. Continue to lead us in our lives in everything we are going to do today. And help us to at all times. Thank you, dear Father. And thank you, Brother Jabulani, for leading us in this um, in this uh, reading, Deserve Ages. Father, may you bless him and guide him and protect him, dear Father. And continue with um, an understanding and with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Judith, Amen. for the reading and for the prayer. I'll hand over to the platform manager. Uh, yes, as a, a brother, Desire is driving, so we'll, uh, we'll do the announcements. We'd like to thank Brother Jubilani. It's certainly an interesting chapter. Um, jealousy, envy, oh, there was uniting on the things, what, you know, the, 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 the characteristics of, of um, Satan, weren't they? Uh, all this jealousy and envy being united together. Yes, um, at um, 10 o'clock it will be the gems, uh, music and, and uh, photography of nature. And then at 12 o'clock it will be um, uh, midday prayer band and the speaker is Sister Dorothy. And at 6.30 song service. And at 7 o'clock another time a message from Elder Searchwell. So um, have a nice day everyone. And also the 23rd to 29th of December, all road leads to Cap and Lee for our winter retreat. Amen. Have a nice day. See you all later by God's grace. Thank you, everyone. Amen.